An old English judge said once upon a time, necessitous men are not free men. Liberty requires opportunity to make a living, a living decent according to the standard of the time, a living which gives man not only enough to live by, but something to live for. For too many of us, the political equality we once had won was meaningless in the face of economic inequality. A small group had concentrated into their own hands an almost complete control over other people's property, other people's money, other people's labor, other people's lives. For too many of us, for too many of us throughout the land, life was no longer free, liberty no longer real. Men could no longer follow the pursuit of happiness. The royalists I have spoken of, the royalists of the economic order, have conceded that political freedom was the business of the government, but they have maintained that economic slavery was nobody's business. If the average citizen is guaranteed equal opportunity in the polling place, he must have equal opportunity in the marketplace. <laughs> These economic royalists complain that we seek to overthrow the institutions of America. What they really complain of is that we seek to take away their power. Our allegiance and our allegiance to American institutions requires the overthrow of this kind of power. In vain, they seek to hide behind the flag and the Constitution. But in their blindness, they forget what the flag and the Constitution stand for. <laughs> now, as always, for over a century and a half, the flag, the Constitution, stand against a dictatorship by mob rule and the overprivileged alike. And the flag and the Constitution stand for democracy, not tyranny, for freedom, not subjection.